While the Canadian dollar has gained strength versus the U.S. dollar since early March, and it's again approaching 80 cents U.S. This comes, of course, as oil prices soar, Canadian wheat farmers get ready to export more of their product, and the U.S. dollar itself gains ground against other, US, other currencies around the world. Joining us for perspective is Adam Button. He's a currency analyst at Forex Live. Adam, thanks for joining us. There seems to be so much at play uh, with the Canadian dollar. Uh, give us your view of where it's headed over the next six months or so. Yeah, I'm very optimistic about the Canadian dollar. Everything that Russia sells, Canada is selling right now, and we're selling it at higher prices than in a generation or in most cases ever. Um, you know, we see the commodity investment is starting to come and there's this realization that Canada has everything that Russia had and that we're going to need a lot of these things like oil for a lot longer than maybe we thought we did. Um, so that everything's lined up for the Canadian dollar right now. We're going to see record trade balance this year, or the best since 2008. We're going to see strong Canadian retail sales. Today's the first day in Ontario we can take our masks off. And I think consumers are ready to spend and they're flush with housing cash and uh, other sorts of COVID uh, supports that are ready to be spent. So we're going to surprise in retail sales, we're going to surprise in, in trade, and I think Canada is also going to surprise, or the Bank of Canada, with a 50 basis point rate hike in April. And I think that's what really sets off the next leg of Canadian dollar strength from here. Interesting. Uh, what's it telling us, Adam, that the Canadian dollar is making significant gains against the U.S. dollar, while the U.S. dollar itself is making some pretty uh, significant gains against the so-called Dixie Index, a basket of currencies? Right. Just hanging in there right now has been a pretty good move for the Canadian dollar. Now we're at seven weeks highs today in the Canadian dollar. We've just taken out some levels. And again, that's with a bit of that risk aversion in there. And if I look at the state of play right now in the market, we had this fear trade uh, going in into the war in Ukraine. And that's natural, but that's sort of morphing into more of a worry trade. Now fear moves markets, worry doesn't so much. And we're starting to see that fade. Now at the same time, there's this route in tech and that's going on again today. It's not necessarily a negative for the Canadian dollar um, in, in the macro perspective, but we do see that risk aversion again on that, and that's restraining the Canadian dollar. But I, I look at it right now like a balloon being held underwater, and once some of these worries start to fade, the Canadian dollar will rise up and pop above this range we've been in about for nine months, which is around 77 to 81 cents. Um, in the news today, as you know, is a labor disruption at CP Rail. You've got some thoughts on that and what, what near-term impact that might have on the dollar. You know, traditionally, historically, we've pushed these things to the side and said, you know what, it'll, it'll work itself out. And that's sort of the playbook that the market's looking at right now. We're in day one, day two. Uh, after a week or so, you know, we might start to see a little more worry than we would. I would say in the past, we'd give it really five days without any worry. Now, I think after five days or a week, we'll start to see some of that worry creep in just because the supply chain is so strained. I think we, you know, everybody's sort of gasping at the supply chain and trying to understand what's broken, what might come back, what, what the timeline might be. And every event like this, uh, it, it adds to it. We saw even the floods in uh, BC months ago. The lumber industry is still trying to recover from that. And now it has to deal with this. And we're clearly headed to some sort of food crisis in grains. And we're not going to be able to get enough out, or as you uh, reported earlier, enough fertilizer into Canada to, to make things better. So it's, you know, ultimately that, that probably benefits the Canadian dollar in Canada, but it will be a humanitarian catastrophe. And so, you know, the sooner this can happen, the better. Um, and, and I think it does start to weigh, but probably not until this time next week. A lot of Canadians might wonder why the dollar isn't higher, given what's happened to crude oil prices over the past year. They've basically done nothing but go up. And in fact, the Canadian dollar, if you look at it versus the U.S. dollar, is actually uh, well off its 52-week high versus the U.S. dollar, despite the recent rally we've seen. It, it's unbelievable. I mean, the main thing, if you look at it, you have oil and you have oil investment. When we had the Canadian dollar hit parity, uh, you know, 14 years ago for the first time, it was that investment coming into Canada, that belief that Canadian oil was, Canada was a great place to invest and to extract oil. And that's as true as it ever were, but the investment landscape isn't the same now. So those billion dollar projects or multi-billion dollar projects, whether it's LNG, whether it's oil sands or other Canadian oil extraction, just isn't coming. Now, I believe the political... Um, a manifest about that is changing right now. I think there is a widespread belief that we're not all just going to buy EVs and, and build a few windmills and we'll be done with oil. 
I think there's a, a realization politically and in markets that we're going to need oil for many years to come, and Canada is a pretty cheap place to get it now. Um, and I think the budget this week could be a bit of a sea change. We're going to have carbon capture uh, subsidies or, or legislation along with that, and I believe that can give Canada the social license to develop oil and gas once again. And I think that could be a trigger for some of these companies because Canada is, is doing incredible work in the carbon capture space. And that could be a huge industry by itself. And that could attract some of those investment flows that have been missing to connect the Canadian dollar to the oil and gas rally. Interesting. One thing we haven't touched on yet, uh, and it's crucial to currencies, is interest rate hikes by the two respective central banks, the Fed in the United States, uh, the Bank of Canada here in Canada. Both of them have taken <clears throat> step one in a series of rate hikes. How does that shape the market's uh, perception of the two currencies? Right. I, I'm looking at five-year rates right now. So in the U.S., the, the, the Treasury rate is at about 2.25%. In Canada, it's right around 2%. So the market is saying you know, the U.S. will probably hike a little faster, and you're getting that premium to hold U.S. dollars. Well, it's very close. I think if we see a Bank of Canada 50 basis point rate hike in April, and, and that's priced around 45% right now, we can start to see that flip. Now, Canada, on the other hand, has much more danger in the housing market and that could restrain where the Bank of Canada eventually gets to but for right now I think that until the housing market really you know we're either gonna have here a pop or we're gonna have a top a nice flattening top in Canadian housing and I think if it can top out and and stay flat here the Bank of Canada has a little bit more leeway to rate hike rates faster and they also don't have that global responsibility for stability in markets uh, that the Fed is, is dealing with and is afraid to hike by 50. I think the Bank of Canada can be a bit more aggressive and that's what's going to get the Canadian dollar moving. Let's finish on a negative note. I think, at least I think you think it's a negative and that is the troubling uptick in COVID cases that we're seeing on the other side of the world in China and in Hong Kong. You know, it reminds me of exactly two years ago, uh, right around this time of year, when we were seeing COVID cases rise and the market just ignoring it and ignoring it until all of a sudden it hit and we said, wow, this, you know, it shut down everything. You know, today China reported another 4,000 cases. Uh, Shanghai had its most number of cases ever today. Now, lots of this is it's concentrated in China, you know, delivers the same sort of, um, you know, comments that say they're going to deal with it. But we've seen, and, and the other thing I think that pleased markets last week was China saying, well, you know what, we're going to ease some restrictions on business. Well, that's great for right now, but if it doesn't completely curb China, we could be seeing widespread lockdowns there again. And that could ultimately hurt oil, hurt commodity demand. So much of what the world makes and what Canada makes is really priced by Chinese demand. And if that starts to falter because of COVID lockdowns, uh, I think we get a, a, it could, it's a big risk for the Canadian dollar um, and for the market in general. Adam Button, thanks for a great discussion on all the moving parts affecting the Canadian dollar. He's chief currency analyst at Forex Live. Still ahead, some notable calls from analysts on high-profile stocks.